the struggles continue for Wisconsin's defense. Will it stop? How can it stop? How can the Badgers get stops? This is the question that is plaguing this Wisconsin basketball team and making it so frustrating to watch a team that climbed such high highs early in the year. It's still an NCAA tournament team, but there are some serious, serious problems with this team, and we need to address some of them. Frankly, some of them are not Wisconsin's fault, and yeah, we're going to talk about Greg Gard, and no, my opinions aren't going to make some of you happy. But this is the Skiny Six Pack Podcast. Thank you for starting your day or getting through your day this afternoon or evening with Six Pack, the Skiny Six Pack the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrist, and you can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrist, and follow the podcast at Scotty Sixpack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Yes, I said we're going to be coming back at you on Monday. If you're catching this on YouTube, you you got it earlier than Monday. Um, maybe, maybe we'll put it in the podcast feed a little bit earlier than that. But if you are not watching on YouTube, that is the place where we guarantee you're going to be able to get this Early and often, we, we gave a little treat to our, our, our podcast listeners uh, on the traditional audio platform uh, late last evening, giving them the Bricktology episode that was in your feed before this one a little bit early. So uh, subscribe on all platforms. It's the best way to get the content as quickly as possible. Because you never know, sometimes I sneak a little treat in for, for either platform a little bit early uh, for, for the folks over there. But we, we got to talk about this Wisconsin loss. Because the Illinois Fighting Illini just blitzed the Wisconsin Badgers 91 to 83. A loss that is in large part on Wisconsin's defense. And not entirely so, but it is, I think, the main reason Wisconsin lost. And it all stems from a couple of runs. Frankly, there are times in which Wisconsin played really solid defense against Illinois. Wisconsin only allowed Illinois to score nine points in the first nine and a half minutes of the first half. Illinois ended the first half with 39 points, scoring 30 points in the final 11 and a half minutes. In the second half, Wisconsin allowed Illinois to score 52 points. Points, 52 points allowed in a half by this Wisconsin basketball team. Granted, Illinois only shot 52% from the field overall, but if you look at that broken down, Illinois shot 56% from the field in the second half, 48.4 in the first half. So doing some extra work in the second half to bring that average up and look, 52% is pretty dang good as it is. In the second half, Illinois managed to score 52 points, although Wisconsin did hold Illinois scoreless for a nice little 8-0 stretch in the middle there. So even with that 8-0 stretch that Illinois struggled with, Wisconsin still allowed Illinois to get 52 points. When you look at the 30 points that Illinois scored in the 11 and a half minutes to end the first half, they scored basically at that same pace for the entire 20 minutes of the second half, even with that 8-0 shutout run the Badgers went on right there. It's, it's very concerning that Wisconsin is allowing a team to just score and score and score and score. Once again, Wisconsin allowed one of the highest scoring outputs by an opponent in program history. One of several times this season that Wisconsin has allowed opponents to put up near record numbers against it. If you're more interested into digging into how Wisconsin has let up so many record performances, I mean, frankly, both putting up some on offense and allowing plenty on defense. Uh, I, I have a piece about it breaking down that Wisconsin must return to its roots to bounce back uh, over on Badger Notes. You can see my latest work over there. Link to the podcast description. If I had written that piece today, this, this performance would be in it as well. 91 points allowed. Just, just brutal. And that first nine and a half minutes that Wisconsin played 
looked really, really, really good. Wisconsin was not allowing Illinois to, to get out and make, sh make shots, really collapsing on Illinois in the paint, not allowing a lot of penetration. It looked like the effort of Wisconsin teams of old. And yes, this Wisconsin defensive effort, although they allowed 91 points, was I, frankly quite a bit better than what we saw at Indiana. And I, and I don't think that's particularly close, but still had a plenty of problems. Where are the answers? The answers are hard to suss out from this game because there are a couple of things that really went against Wisconsin in, in a way that is not necessarily its fault not necessarily Greg Gard's fault, not necessarily the player's fault. Illinois shot 56% from three. Nine of 16. Wisconsin shot six of 16. And started, what uh, I think it was one of four. Now, Wisconsin shot far too many threes down the stretch. That that That, that is for sure. But at a certain point, you have to try and get back. There is also a stretch in there where Wisconsin had a six-point lead with roughly eight minutes to go. Wisconsin didn't spend the entire game trying to fight back. Wisconsin was in a close game really up until the final three minutes. Badgers didn't need to be chucking up threes, and for the most part, did not. For the, for the most part, I was pleased with the shot selection in this game. But when you give up a, a 20 to five run in the first half, in a game that you lose by eight, that's really hard to come back from. When you just get hammered at the three-point line. That's how you lose a game like this. Wisconsin outscored Illinois in the paint by 12. And that's with Stephen Crowell sitting on the bench for most of this game. Stephen Crowell limited to only 14 minutes. And, and you'll have to forgive me as I'm balancing, looking between my notes, staring at some stuff on my phone as notes from post-game interviews come in and, and also the box score. But those 14 minutes that Stephen Crowell played are, frankly, even a little bit misleading because Stephen Crowell picked up his second foul in the first half, which sent him to the bench, picked up his third foul early, uh, about a minute and a half into the second half, and then picked up his fourth with 12.55 to go. Wisconsin employed a small ball lineup for most of this game. That small ball lineup, Maybe helped, maybe hindered Wisconsin. I think it's hard to tell because I liked seeing Wisconsin go to it. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the second half of the show. But the struggles that Wisconsin had, particularly stopping Marcus Domask. Marcus Domask, the Wapan native, as you all know, because they made sure to mention it plenty of times on that broadcast. And if you're and if you're asking yourself, oh, why didn't Greg Gard bring in the Wapan native? For, okay. Look, this was not a kid who had any interest from power conference schools coming out of high school. And this was a guy that Greg Gard did seek out in the transfer portal this offseason. It was not for without trying. And Greg Gard brought, brought in AJ Store instead. So, like, I, I don't know. What, what are you upset with here? AJ Store already ran off another transfer portal commit from Wisconsin this offseason in Noah Reynolds, who is playing at Green Bay now. Like, Can't, can't get them all. And hard to blame Greg Gard for not getting a guy that nobody in the Big Ten wanted coming out of high school, even if he was from Wisconsin. Uh, but Marcus Tomask. Okay, hang on. Before I get off of that, because I'm seeing a lot of people give these like awful, poorly informed takes today on the internet. That's why I say it. Marcus Tomask had 31 points on 12 of 21 shooting, four of six from three. Eight rebounds, 
also led the Illini with three assists. A just bang of performance by that young man. Uh, I mean, hats off to him. And Tyler Wall had the fortune, misfortune of, of being on Domask's defensive assignment for much of most of that game. And when you look at it and say, yeah, and you allowed the man to score 31 points, you say, oh, Tyler Wall got cooked. Domask hit some tough shots. Domask hit some fading away shots that most shooters probably are not going to hit, but he still managed to bury them. Tyler Wall, in post-game interviews, said that he thought he gave Damask a couple of easy looks, but for the most part thought that he forced tougher shots and complimented Marcus Damask for making those tough shots. And I think that's about right. It was a tough guard, and I would have liked to see maybe some rotations, some doubling, because Greg Gard didn't really choose to double anybody on Illinois in this one. And that's because Greg Gard was faced with having to pick his poison from this loaded Illinois offense. Illinois has had the number one offense in the country for the last mm, four or five weeks now. And, and frankly, and I'd have to look at the numbers, but it doesn't feel particularly close. This offense is just scoring at will. It is unbelievable. Marcus Damask, 31 points. Terrence Shannon with another 23 points. Terrence Shannon, who I think did a particularly good job defending AJ Store tonight, too. AJ Store held to 13 points on four of 12 shooting. Very, very, very tough to win in 91 to 83 point affair when AJ Store only puts up 13. It's going to be hard. And I think one of the biggest questions that Wisconsin has coming out of this is, does it wish it would have done something different with Marcus Tomask? And what would that different thing that Greg Gard would want to do be? I'm not entirely sure, but I get a couple of ideas. Ideas that we're going to talk about here on the show. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at TickPick, because TickPick is where I get tickets to any event that I would like to go to concerts, sporting events, basketball games, hockey games, NFL games, anything. I get my tickets on TickPick because TickPick does not charge fees for tickets, no service fees, no delivery fees, none of that nonsense. The price you see is the price you're going to get. You're never going to be faced with the fact that you go to check out and all of a sudden those tickets were two, three hundred, sometimes even more than you, more than that than you expected when you first put those tickets in your cart. Plus, if you use my link in the podcast description, as I'm going to save you 10 bucks on your first order. So go to the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K. Download it in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Click my link in the podcast description. Save 10 bucks on your first order on no fee tickets to any live event that you want to get to. Maybe you're trying to get to Wisconsin Rutgers at the Kohl Center next week. I don't know, uh, but that's what we're going to be talking about coming up this week on the show. If you want to save... 10 bucks on your first order at TickPick. Get you a good deal to get to that Badgers Scarlet Knights game on Thursday at the Kohl Center. We, we got a long week before we get to that Badgers Scarlet Knights game. That means we got a lot of time to talk about this Wisconsin basketball team. Before we do that, we're, we're going to be breaking down this Wisconsin women's hockey series against St. Thomas. As I'm recording this, the Badgers are about 40 minutes out from the game two against the Tommies in Madison. Badgers looking to sweep. St. Thomas in the first round of the WCHA playoffs and advance to the final faceoff where it appears the Badgers will be facing Minnesota in the final faceoff semifinals. Another big series against another big game against Minnesota as always. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Rutgers preview that game, wrap up that game. Uh, try to bring on another guest to talk about this Wisconsin basketball team. What we think might be going wrong. If anybody has ideas, uh, we, we are here. We are here to, to think about it, to talk about it, figure out where this Wisconsin basketball team goes next. And that's also what Greg Gard is trying to figure out. 
And man, Greg Gard didn't have it easy in this one. And yeah, that's why he gets paid the money that he gets paid. That's why he has the job that he has. Saying he had it hard in this one is not to make excuses for it. Steve Crowell fouled out. Didn't foul out, but had four fouls. And his replacement, Nolan Winter, did not look good. In the first half, when Nolan Winter and Marcus Ilver came in to give some rest to uh, to Stephen Crowell and Tyler Wall, that front court just got blitzed, got absolutely hammered. It did not look good. It was absolutely terrible. And the Badgers replaced that by going back to giving Carter Gilmore some minutes in the front court at the end of the first half. What I th thought was maybe a not great coaching decision by Greg Gard was the fact that then Carter Gilmore didn't get any minutes in the second half. Carter Gilmore had played some very solid defense at one end and then on the other end of the floor in subsequent possessions. Tyler Wall gave him a nice little feed around the rim and Carter Gilmore buried the bucket and got the foul and made the free throw for an and one bucket. It, it was, it was very nice. And, and that was part of a big run to end the first half for Wisconsin to, to put him into striking distance, to put him just down two after that 20 to five run that Wisconsin had, or that Wisconsin allowed Il Illinois to score overall. Uh, I'm trying to find that exact run that the Badgers went on. Yeah, the Badgers scored 10 points on its final five first half possessions with Tyler Wall and Carter Gilmore in the front court. Quite good. Quite good. Problem then, you don't have Carter Gilmore playing at all in the second half. And yeah, I get it. Maybe those couple of plays you get out of Gilmore are the best plays you're going to get from him all night anyway. I, I understand that thinking. For the most part, Greg Gard went small ball which I think was probably the right answer after seeing the way Marcus Ilver and Nolan Winter struggled in the first half of just not being able to stop anything, of just looking completely out of sorts, looking just outmatched by Illinois. They didn't appear to be real options for, for Wisconsin in the second half, and... Neither of them saw the floor until the very end of the second half. Nolan Winter came in for just a quick spell um, in the second half as John Blackwell. No, when Crowell picked up his fourth foul, which a bad fourth foul by, by Stephen Crowell, by the way. We'll talk about that in a second. Greg Gard brought in Nolan Winter for just a second because he had been trying to give Max Klesmith some rest already. And then subs Winter out and Klesmit back in shortly afterwards. So Greg Greg Gard knew he wasn't going to get away with Nolan Winter in that game. And so instead they they go small with a lineup with just Tyler Wall in the front court, AJ Store, John Blackwell on the wing, Max Klesmit, Chucky Hepburn, which I thought was a solid lineup. I thought John Blackwell played pretty well despite the fact that he ended up foul, fouling out, had seven points in his 24 minutes. I thought played all right, made, made some timely cuts to the basket as always. Max Klesman, I thought, also played pretty well. Didn't really settle for th like threes more than he needed to. But the small ball lineup, I, I think, was something that worked out well. Now, the one thing that I think Greg Gard probably wants back is leaving Tyler Wall on an island with Marcus Nomask. I say probably once back because frankly, I'm not even sure if that's the right answer because of the way Terrence Shannon Jr. was also playing very well. The way that anybody on that Illinois offense can play very well. And so if you double them, if you double anybody, they might just be out there. And maybe the answer is you, you try to switch it up. Try try to put AJ Store or John Blackwell or Max Klesmit 
or Chuck Hepburn. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> rolling off the names because frankly, I, I don't try anything different, right? Uh, on Marcus Domask because Tyler Wall couldn't couldn't finish the job, couldn't get the job done against him. It, it was rough at times. And not necessarily because Tyler Wall was playing poor defense, but just because the way Damask was just choosing to finish uh, and getting there. And, and look, the process is the process, but also you need to listen to the results. And if the process, even if you did like the process, even if you look through the buckets and say, I think Tyler Wall played good defense, but Damask was just hitting buckets, you still need to try something else. Uh, otherwise you're going to take yourself out of the game. So I, I thought that was probably the biggest coaching bugaboo by, by Greg Arden in this game. But otherwise I think I'm fine overall with the decision-making for, uh, because Nolan winter and Mark silver weren't doing anything for you in this game. Marcus silver got into the game late and buried a three to give Wisconsin. I mean, like it's last gasp of air before Illinois really twisted the knife, but once again, this is my criticism of Marcus Silver. He attempted a three. I do not believe, and he didn't in this one, do not believe he has attempted a shot from inside the arc ever since he's gotten this extended run um, since that loss at Michigan. Mark Silver experiment does not seem to be going very well and certainly didn't go that well in this game. Finally buried one of those threes, but other than that, uh, I mean, didn't, didn't look good. Nolan Winter didn't look good. So glad Greg Gard was unafraid to try something different with this lineup. Glad he, glad he was not afraid to do something different with John Blackwell, give him heavy minutes. You got to think maybe, maybe this, this team does a little bit better with, with Stephen Crowell in the front court. Which brings us to our MVP and NIP of Wisconsin's loss to Illinois. I think this MVP award is hard to give out because Tyler Wall played really, really, really well offensively. And even if the process looked good with his defense against Marcus Domask, the results just weren't there. And it's hard to give an MVP award to someone who gave up 31 points as the primary defender to Marcus Domask. Now, again, I don't know that all those points were uh, give, given up against by, by Tyler Wall, but you know what I'm saying. But Tyler Wall did perform really well in the offensive at 9 of 14 shooting. He buried a wide open three at a point in time. Uh, I, I mean, just had a couple of real crafty twice. He got the ball out of an out of, out of bounds play on the right block and, and turned around, took that baseline to the hoop. I, I thought played, played really, really well. I think, and, uh, and NIP is maybe AJ store. We talked about the fact that he needs to perform a little bit better when the Badgers are, are rolling, but overall, I don't think Wisconsin took many bad shots. I, I don't think they AJ store took maybe his first bad shot of the game with 12 Oh five left that I thought was not great. Uh, but then this leads to the sequence that I think eventually ends up being bad. AJ store has his first bad shot at the 12 Oh five mark. Leads to an open, an open three at the other end. That's a miss, but eventually a, a an offensive rebound for Dane Danger that Hepburn can't grab just because of the size differential. And you know that that's you don't have Stephen Crowell in the game. That's real tough. That doesn't turn into a bucket for Illinois, but does lead to a steal by Chucky Hepburn, and then a transition three for Max Klesman. Eventually, after after a little bit of shenanigans, a little bit later on, and energy starts getting high, John Blackwell is jawing and messing with Coleman Hawkins and rattling him, uh, really trying to sell that 
Coleman Hawkins should be getting teed up. And, and you see John Blackwell on the sideline kind of, kind of laughing with Chucky Hepburn as Chucky Hepburn trying to pull John Blackwell back. Blackwell knows what he's doing in that situation. He's, he's really just trying to antagonize Coleman Hawkins. This energy is good. This energy felt like a lot of fight. And as Wisconsin comes out of that media timeout, a couple of good plays lead to a really, really solid Klesmet drive on, on an open lane. Next possession, Wisconsin gets an alley-oop to AJ Store, But then here's where it starts, starts happening. And where th this needs improvement players is really Wisconsin's offense or just lineup as a whole. Because the way Wisconsin brings itself out of these games and is part of the focus of the piece that I previously referenced in part of the show uh, is linked in my podcast description on Badger Notes. Wisconsin loses its defense trying to find the luster of offense. Klesman has a great drive. Then Tyler Wall with this cute little alley-oop to AJ Store. But on the opposite end, Terrence Shannon buries like this, this awesome mid-range jumper that just looks pretty and there's just not a lot you can do about it. But then at the other end, Max Klesman then takes an ill-advised mid-range turnaround jumper for seemingly no reason. And then Marcus Domask on the other end hits a long range three to go up five. Then AJ store kind of like Max Klesmet copy Terrence Shannon from the possession before AJ store tries to copy Marcus Domask and takes his own long range three. That was then missed from the 11 ish minute mark to the eight. This is where the Badgers need their most improvement is once things get rolling a little bit, they can lose their own identity by just trying to seek more and more and more points. Wisconsin looked solid for quite a while in that middle stretch of the second half for, for that, you know, first eight ish minutes of the second half, but then goes on this run where they have a couple of real nice offensive plays. Then they just like abandon their defensive post at the other end and start chucking up shots and speeding up the pace just to keep feeling like they need to keep up with the offense at the other end. To Greg Gard's credit, he took time out after this, after this sequence before it got really, really, really out of hand. And the team came out of that timeout and seemed calmed down afterwards. But it was just in the epitome of everything that has plagued this Wisconsin team this season. That is losing its defensive post and losing its offensive identity for the sake of chasing after quick, fanciful buckets. And that's, I think, kind of what doomed Wisconsin in this game as well. It's a 20 to five run in the first half. And then this weird stretch there in the middle of the second half where all of a sudden it just abandoned its identity. Abandoned its identity shortly after it had. I, I, I mean, stopped Illinois from scoring anything at all. Going on an 8 0 run. And then Illinois just completely evaporates that. It's the push-pull of this Badger season that has ultimately led the team to where it is now, which is that it's going to the NCAA tournament. But my, oh my, if it's not going to be the most popular upset pick in the first round, if Wisconsin you know, can even keep its head above water on the five, six line at this point. Because plenty of prognosticators have had them as a six before, as we talked to our friend T3 bracketology on, on the last show, he has them as a five, but T3 is slowly becoming, you know, one of, one of the more bullish on Wisconsin. Uh, let me drop, he dropped them to a low five after this loss. 
it's not going to be a fun finish to the season if things don't get better. Maybe Wisconsin gets it rolling back against Rutgers. Just try to try to take a little pride in, in defeating this team that depanced you earlier in the season. But we'll, we'll break down what Wisconsin needs to bring to that game because that Rutgers team is not necessarily firing like a well-oiled machine as of now. If, if you're listening to this before Sunday, uh, that, that is when Rutgers plays its next game, uh, Sunday the 3rd against Nebraska, who very well could be a Big Ten tournament foe for, for Wisconsin as well. They're falling into place there in the bracket where it looks like those two teams could very, very, very well be paired up against one another uh, on that Thursday or Friday of the Big Ten tournament. So that, that game should be of interest to Badgers fans to watch. But as always, we'll, we'll keep you updated here on the feed, keep you updated in all things Wisconsin sports. Even when they are bad uh, here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Thank you for listening. I've been your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. While you're here, leave some kind words, five stars, nice comments. Really, really does help people find the show. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. And while you're there, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notified as soon as we put new episodes into your feed. Until we talk to you again very soon on Wisconsin. <laughs>